Early lock time for today in Daily Fantasy Baseball at the main slate locking at 1.05 p.m. Eastern for today on FanDuel, but still nine games across this main slate. So a pretty juicy one despite it being an earlier offering. We're going to break down which players to target within that nine-game slate, my top pitchers, offenses to stack, and much more to get you ready for Thursday's day game action. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis, I am a senior writer and analyst for Number Fire here to break down this nine game main slate with locks up for 105 p.m. Eastern for today. Weather notes on this slate there are a couple spots with some rain and thunderstorms in the forecast. First one is in Kansas City for the Royals and the Orioles. Looks like pretty scattered storms, so they should be able to play, but it is something to consider for sure. Similar story at Coors Field for the Rockies and the Brewers. Again, I think they should be able to play. But you'll have to check back on the timeline of that weather later on. So be wary of Kansas City and Coors. I do still like options in both those games. We'll talk about those later on. But make sure you are checking the weather later on today. We'll dig into the pitching preview, some stacks, and more in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We are here every weekday breaking down the MLB DFS slates, UFC with Austin Swimming for select slates as well, PGA via myself and Brandon Gadula back next Tuesday. Make sure you're subscribed there. Also, if you want to watch a video version of the show, check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page. The biggest horse race of the year is here, and there's no better time to get in on the action on FanDuel Racing, because right now, all customers can get a no-sweat derby bet up to $20. That means you get up to $20 back if your win bet doesn't win. The FanDuel Racing app is super easy to use, safe and secure, and when you win, you get paid fast. So don't miss out. The derby is coming up this Saturday. Just visit racing.fanduel.com for your chance to get a no-sweat derby bet up to $20 on FanDuel Racing. That's racing.fanduel.com. Age and residency restrictions apply. Offer valid on first Derby win wager. Refund issued in non-withdrawable racing site credit that expires on June 12, 2023. Restrictions apply. See terms at racing.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Pitching preview for this Thursday main slate. Justin Verlander, fresh off the IL, comes in with a salary of $11,500. Pablo Lopez is at 10 7 with George Kirby at 10000 flat. Zach Eflin, 97 Grayson Rodriguez, 94 We have Jesus Lazardo at 92 followed by Vince Velasquez, Eduardo Rodriguez, Jack Flaherty, Lucas Giolito, and Griffin Canning as the others at $8,000 or higher. So a lot of names in that list. Verlander coming off the IL. Keep that in mind as a downgrade for him. Uh, and then uh, some weather spots potentially for some of the other guys, specifically racing Rodriguez, but we're still going to talk about him later on. First, though, top pitcher of the day is Pablo Lopez. 4.00 ERA so far this year. And I think that's masking how filthy he has been. I want to take advantage and rank Lopez first here. He is facing the White Sox, which is a good matchup for a righty. They have an 89 a WRC plus versus righties with a 137 ISO. They don't strike out a ton, but they also don't walk much either. Even with the results for Lopez being just fine, the peripherals are nasty. He is up to six starts with his slider this year. He has a 3.17 skill interactive ERA, strikeout rate 31%, swinging strike rate at 14.8%. All of those numbers are career best marks for Lopez by a wide margin. This pitch is working for him. Lopez has had six plus strikeouts in all six starts thus far. So you may wonder why the results are not as great if the peripherals are so glowing. The past two starts for Lopez against bad offenses also have driven up his ERA. So I did want to dig into those past two starts and see if it was a concern. The velocity is lower than it was to open the year, which might be an issue. But even in those two starts, Lopez still has 13 strikeouts compared to three walks. So he could just be in a rut. Uh, but some of the underlying data says he's just been unlucky as well. That's why I'll put Lopez at the top of my list for today, it could bite me because maybe this is a bigger thing than I'm giving it credit for. But I think I've seen enough in those two starts to still be okay with him and be willing to ride uh, with Lopez, despite a couple Rocky starts for today, facing off of the White Sox. 
mentioned Grayson Rodriguez, and we talked about this earlier this week where I don't get to talk about prospects in a positive way super often. We were on Tanner Bybee earlier this week, but let's run it back and go to Grayson Rodriguez today, assuming the weather will allow us to check back on the weather because if there is a long rain delay, he could get yanked. That is always a concern. Rodriguez facing the Royals, big part of the, the reason I like him for tonight or for today. Because the Royals offense is just hideous right now. 67 WRC plus against righties. They 128 ISO. Their plate discipline numbers are pathetic, frankly. 25% strikeout rate with a 6% walk rate. Giving that to any pitcher is great. Giving it to Rodriguez makes him the number two option for tonight. And for Rodriguez, the rate stats are really good so far. Across five starts, he has a 3.51 skill interactive ERA. He has a 32% strikeout rate, and he's getting ground balls. So the rate stats, very good across the board. I'm just not sure how deep he'll get into this game. That's not talking about the weather, talking about long length for him. He has not finished six innings yet. And if you want to get a quality start bonus on FanDuel, which you should because it's four points, that's an extra uh, out plus a strikeout, you want to get there. And you can't get that without going six innings. And Rodriguez has done this, this, the, these good rate stats against pretty pathetic offenses. So even in good matchups, he hasn't gone six yet. He does get a good matchup again today, but it is a concern. That's why I have Lopez above Rodriguez for tonight. I do like Rodriguez plenty. Again, he's number two for me, a hair above George Kirby, which might be a mistake, but Kirby also has not been going super, super deep in games. I have him projected for 90 pitches for today. So strikeout projections for Rodriguez, 7.35. I have Kirby at 6.11. That's enough where even with the length concerns, I'm okay giving Rodriguez the edge of the number two spot. So for me, it's Lopez one, Rodriguez two, and then I'll go George Kirby, number three. I think the value play is a coin flip here between Lucas Giolito and Jack Flaherty. Both these guys are fine. Uh, Both have strikeout projections right at six. I'm going to go Flaherty. Uh, his win odds are a bit higher. That can work as a tiebreaker here. And I think the more recent changes for Flaherty have been pretty good. He's facing the Angels today. They are not as lethal of an offense against righties as they are against lefties, which makes sense. You know, outside of Shohei Otani, they are a pretty righty heavy lineup. WRC plus for them against righties is 102 with a 23% strikeout rate. Flaherty has had some big issues this year. Primarily, he's been walking too many guys. He has a 15% walk rate overall, seven of which came in his first start. Now, after that first start, he decided to throw more cutters. And he did still walk six guys his next time out. But the past four starts have been much better. No more than three walks in that uh, four-start sample, along with plenty of strikeouts. Flaherty in that four-start sample, six-plus strikeouts, three of the past four. He had nine and one, and that game was on the road. He is at home here. The walks definitely could kill him, which is why I'm not, you know, champing at the bit to to get him in there. But I think he has a path, a pretty obvious path to a good game. And I'm going to take that here for 85. So if you like Lucas Giolino, would not talk you off of him. I think he definitely does make sense. But I'm going to give the edge to Flaherty. I think he's just the better option uh, between the two guys for tonight. So pitchers I like here, or for today, I should say, uh, I like Lopez one, Rodriguez two, George Kirby three, and then top value is going to be Jack Flaherty by a hair over Lucas Giolito. Let's dig into the stacks here. I know you're probably sick of me talking about the Brewers and having them flop at Coors Field, but if the weather allows us to, I think we should go back there one more time. Maybe we should pray for thunderstorms to keep us off of them, but I do think it's a good spot. So despite what's happened the first two games, I'm going back there once again. Brewers are facing Connor Siebold. I think, again, that's probably a fine matchup. Siebold transitioning from the bullpen into the rotation. And he doesn't profile like a guy we need to fear as a starter. This year in the bullpen, Siebold has a 9.4% swing and strike rate. Didn't get many ground balls. And now he's going to be asked to go deeper in games, which makes your stuff less potent across the board. We did see Siebold in the rotation last year. He made five starts and he let up a 49% fly ball rate. His strikeout rate was just 19%, which led to an 11.29 ERA and a 4.63 skill interactive ERA. I don't think it'll be quite that bad, but our data in the big leagues on Siebold says we can stack against him at Coors Field. So despite what has happened so far with the, with the Brewers, I think we should go back there one more time for tonight. 
And they have been much better against righties than lefties this year with a 104 WRC plus 155 ISO and a lot of walks. So broadly, it's a good thing that Siebel is a righty. And I think part of the reason they've been good against righties is that some of their right-handed batters have hit well against righties. Uh, Brian Anderson didn't play last night. Doesn't seem like that's an injury-related thing. If he's back in there, his overall numbers versus righties here are pretty good. He has a 203 ISO. His barrel rate overall is 14%, which I didn't really expect out of Brian Anderson this year. Even without it being a lefty, I think Anderson worth it. With the salary at 63, again, check that he's playing. He did not play last night despite it being a lefty. Uh, but if Anderson is in there, I think he makes a lot of sense. They're probably not going to have William Contreras today. That does downgrade them because he is a very good hitter. But again, do something the Brewers worth it for today. The Cubs facing Patrick Corbin. And I think we know what to do there, where the Cubs are a great option for stacking for today. And you do kind of feel bad for Corbin because it's not like he's asking to get rocked. And I do respect that he's going out there. He's still trying. He's still working deep in games. It's just not working out right now. This year, Corbin is using more sinkers, and that's likely a good thing based on his batted ball issues. And it has increased his ground ball rate to 47%. It just hasn't mattered at all. His ERA is 5.74. His expected ERA is even higher at 6.92. And the reason that those numbers are pretty poor is because he has a 14% strikeout rate paired with a 44% hard hit rate. He's faced some really tough teams in this time in his defense, but the Cubs are, despite last night, a tough team as well. They have a 132 WRC plus against lefties across a small sample. That will not stay that high, but... Given the number of good righties in this lineup, I would not be shocked if they do wind up being a plus team against lefties as the sample expands to. So I think we just keep on stacking against Corbin until he gives us a reason not to. The one downside with the Cubs is that we know everyone will go here. People adore stacking against Patrick Corbin. So if you want to stack the Cubs, you got to think a bit, try to be a bit different when doing so. I think that one way you could do so is using a guy who is suboptimal you compare his spot in the batting order to his salary. That's Nelson Velasquez, who is probably going to bat 8th, 7th, 8th, ninth, somewhere in there. His salary is $3,000. You, you know, don't really often use guys that low in the order with a salary that high. But against lefties since the start of last year, 259 ISO for Velasquez. He did leave in the fifth inning of his most recent start, so there is some pinch hit risk here. But he has finished all the other games he has started this year. So there is risk, and it's being different for a reason, but I need to find ways to make my rosters different than those who are going with um, the Cubs stacks for today. So Seiya Suzuki, the obvious one, I, I like him a lot at 28, but I want to go Velasquez as well to give myself a differentiated piece within my Cubs stacks for tonight. We're going to stick with the Velasquez's here and talk about Vince Velasquez, and he is a guy who has beaten my expectations by a pretty wide margin so far this year. So cap tip to, or cap tip to Vince Velasquez, I have unsuccessfully stacked against him several times, and his ERA is 3.06. Tonight, or today, Velasquez is facing the Rays. I think that'll be a good test of how legit he is. I do think that a lot of what Velasquez has done is probably pretty sticky. He's getting strikeouts, you know, at a decent clip. His hard hit rate is down to 34%. That's good. His previous low since 2018 in that department is 39.8%. He's been above 40% in three of those five years. It's just not letting up many barrels. The ball is still in the air, but it's not as dangerous as it typically has been against Velasquez. The big problem, though, for Velasquez, uh, and if we're trying to pitch ourselves in this being sustainable, is that it's come against pretty poor offenses. He's faced the Nationals, faced the Rockies, faced the White Sox, and he faced the Reds twice. The one tough matchup for Velasquez was against the Cardinals, and he was great in that game with six shutout innings. But here come the Rays. 146 WRC plus against righties, 246 ISO. They have been absurd so far. So it's possible Velasquez has turned a corner. We'll just get a more definitive answer today as he faces a very, very tough team. So I respect what Velasquez has done. Don't think it's entirely fluky, but in this specific matchup, I am still on board with stacking against him. I do want to favor the lefties here. The Rays have just three who are a lock to be in there, but they're all definitely fine. They're Wander Franco, Brandon Lau, and Josh Lowe. I am curious if the Rays react to the platoon splits here for Velasquez and get in Taylor Walls or Luke Rayleigh. Now, Walls' salary is not low. It is very high for some reason. I know he's been good so far this year, but it's 
It's up there. Rayleigh's salary is 31. I think he's a pretty big pinch hit risk. Uh, Walls is less so. So I check out the lineup for lefties and switch hitters, and I give them a bump. I'm going to take a leap with most of them. Rayleigh's the one exception there. It is tough to stack them if you go with Lopez with his salary being where it is. I think they're a bit easier to get to with Rodriguez or with uh, Jack Flaherty. So they might not be super doable with our top couple pitchers, but um, they should be at least a consideration for you, especially if we get some lower salaried switch hitters or lefties in the lineup. Things to watch for today. I typically would be down for Jameson Tyone against the Nationals, but I don't think he'll go very long in this game. He's coming off the IL with a groin issue. It sounded earlier this week as if he wouldn't make the start. He had a 25-pitch bullpen session, but that was his only ramp up. So I have Tyone projected for 60 pitches. I think that's more likely to be too high than too low. So he's out of the consideration for today. Just worry about pitch count. I think that's enough to be lower on him against the Nats for today. Just admit him from our player pool. The Rockies are facing Wade Miley at Coors Field, and I kind of like Miley. He held the Angels in check last week, and they crush lefties. The Rockies don't. So you can justify going here for sure because Wade Miley is not an ace. It's Coors Field. They might not be super popular, but I respect Miley enough to lower the Rockies for today. Finally, I will give the Orioles a swing, weather permitting here. Facing Jordan Lyles, who has a 5.41 skill interactive ERA this year, he lets up tons of fly balls in enough hard contact. So he can have really nice starts where he kind of goes off, but the Orioles are a tough test. So there's enough here for me to use the Orioles at times. Again, assuming we get the all clear on the weather in Kansas City for today. Dinger calls for this day game slate. The boring one, Rowdy Telez. We're out at, uh, at Coors Field, facing a righty. Kind of just going to go that way. So Rowdy Telez, uh, the boring home run call for today. The fun one, I will stick with Nelson Velasquez again. This one's mostly fun because he's batting lower in the order, which means probably not going to see a ton of popularity for today. Uh, I think that's enough to make him pretty attractive. So home run calls, Rowdy Telez and Nelson Velasquez. That is all that we have here for today on this Thursday Made Slate. Once again, do not forget that lock is early, 105 p.m. Eastern. Go get those lineups in before lock and make sure you are uh, all edited up before 105 p.m. If you have dun dummy lineups in there for right now, do not forget to subscribe to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed, wherever you get your podcast. And if you like what you hear, give us a thumbs up over on YouTube or give us a five star rating over on Apple podcasts. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. You can also follow the FanDuel podcast network at FanDuel podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Friday slate. This has been, the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.